Beautiful, Janetta. Thank you so much. And now Kathy will bring us our first scripture reading. Our reading today is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the reading. Thank you. And our second reading is from John's Gospel in the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappers lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God add a blessing of understanding to the reading of these scriptures. So 
So I grew up in a family where we all like to be right. Whenever we traveled, we would go to whatever historical thing there was around. We went to every museum, battlefield, historical mansion, house, you name it. And at the end of the day, my sisters and I were then quizzed by my father usually on the history we had learned that day. Who was the third wife of Henry VIII? Who surrendered at Yorktown? How deep is the ocean? How wide is the sea? The winner of the quiz only got bragging rights, but in our house, those were valuable. We even once had a family discussion about who really said, I'd rather be right than president. I don't remember the particulars, but I'm pretty sure that I said Henry Clay and I was right. I don't like being wrong even today. But hey, it happens occasionally. Mary was so wrong. Mary got so many things wrong that dark morning. Coming to the tomb alone, she sees that this huge stone has been removed. And so she assumes that Jesus' body has been stolen, taken somewhere. That's wrong, but come on. If you buried a loved one and came back the next day to sit by the grave and found it torn up and the body nowhere to be seen, would you assume that that person had been resurrected from the dead? Next wrong move by Mary, going to get the guys. She assumes that perhaps they will know what to do. But then Simon Peter and this other disciple get into this sort of macho foot race followed by a bravery competition about who will actually go into the tomb. And the other disciple went in and the scripture says he saw and believed. But then the next phrase is, for they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. So he believed, but probably he believed the same thing that Mary did, that someone had taken the body. And then the male disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stays. And twice more, she repeats her false assumption, as people sometimes do when they're lost in grief. They have taken my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. She sees angels, but she doesn't seem to acknowledge them. She sees Jesus but takes them for the gardener, wrong again. Mary gets no bragging rights this Easter morning. But the amazing, the astounding, the miraculous thing is that Mary is so much more blessed in being wrong than she would have been if she had been right. The truth of Jesus' resurrection reunited her with her teacher and friend, who then spends 40 days with her and the other disciples, teaching them, encouraging them, commissioning them, and giving them the Holy Spirit before ascending to the Father. And we too are blessed by the fact that she was wrong. We millions of disciples down through the last 2000 plus years, if we listen to the accounts of what happened that dark morning, we see that God upended every expectation. God made us all wrong that day. We who say that there are limits to what God can do, or there are things that God will not forgive. God made us all wrong that day. But what Mary did right, was this, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. She didn't give up on God and go home. She stayed and she wept and she bent over and she looked in the tomb. She kept looking for Jesus. She even volunteered to take his body with her if she could find them. 
Now, Jesus had said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Perhaps that's why Jesus appeared first to Mary. She didn't try to distract herself from her grief. She didn't give up and go home. She didn't berate God for not showing up. She kept on looking for Jesus. When only the gardener appeared, she kept on looking for Jesus. And that for us is the lesson of Easter. When even the morning is dark, be true and keep on looking for Jesus. Be, keep on looking for God. When the company of friends fails to comfort, keep on looking for Jesus. When even the angels don't have the answers and all we can do is repeat and repeat and repeat what we have lost, keep on looking for God. What Easter tells us is that God shows up again and again and again in unlikely ways. When we search for God and fail to see God, we're the ones who are dead wrong. And that is something I am very happy to be wrong about. Mary was wrong. You and I have been wrong when we thought all was lost, when we thought that life had taken God far away. He is not dead. He is risen. I was wrong. We were wrong. Alleluia and amen. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, who rose victorious to the strife for those who came to save his glories. Now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side, rich wounds yet visible, above in beauty glorified no angel in the sky can fully bear the sight but downward bends his burning eye at mysteries so bright crown him the lord of years the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. Thank you.